Hey you, yeah, you there. You need to hit turrets. I know it's risky. I know you could get ganked, ambushed, poked, run down, one shot, mm. all that good stuff. But you need to hit turrets regardless. And here's why that's important. It creates a... Imagine you and your team get into a fight and end up winning. Let's say your support dies, but you get their jungler, ADC and top laner. So a one for three. You all go to Baron, get him for free, and now reset with your newly acquired Baron buff. Now think with me, what's scarier for the enemy team? This situation, while they have most of their turrets up, or the exact same scenario, but the map looks more like this. Starting to see what I mean? In this case, the win condition is getting that Baron buff and applying an immense amount of pressure onto the enemy base. Maybe you can use this Baron buff to take their inner turrets. Maybe an inhibitor, too, if you have a split pusher. Point is, you make the game move forwards in your favor. And that's why creating a situation like that is so important. Now the question is, how do you create this scenario? Well, the answer is in the video title, but you already knew that. What we really need to know is how to take turrets, and it's a little more complicated than you think. First off, you need a minion wave. You learned that in the tutorial. You, uh, you, you played the tutorial, right? But how big of a wave? That's the thing. You need a big wave to get in significant damage onto your turret, especially during laning phase. Well then, how do you build a big wave? Through slow pushing. By only last hitting the minions, you can slowly but surely stack two to three waves on your side before all those minions crash onto the enemy turret. In laning phase, it's usually the longer range champions with good poking power or kill threat that can build pushes like that, as they can prevent the enemy from controlling the wave by punishing them whenever they try. The result is that you'll be zoning the enemy from the wave either through poke or all-in threat, and you'll have the lane all for yourself. Then, the slow pushed wave will crash and give you much more time to hit the turret and get a significant amount of damage in, as well as the gold from the platings. In the mid game, slow pushing is still a viable strategy, especially if you plan on splitting from your team and staying in the side lane with teleport in case a fight breaks out. Pushing with big waves in the mid game will force the enemy team to respond to you, so you can either keep them busy and give your team a numbers advantage on other places of the map, or the best case scenario, the enemy doesn't respond, and you can just mow down their turrets as if they were stupid teenagers in the slasher film. Now there's another issue, and if you've been playing League of Legends for a while, you already know what it is, and may or may not have been traumatized by it. How do you take turrets while keeping yourself safe? That is the million dollar question, and the answer is simple. Knowledge. Knowing where the enemy team is and when they might collapse on you is crucial. With good wards and good map awareness, you can hit turrets as much as you want without actually being at risk. Take this as a rule of thumb. If you can see the enemy support far away and you know the jungler isn't around, you can just go for the turret. Unless you're significantly behind, your lane opponent will have a hard time defending their turret against a huge minion wave, especially if you play a ranged champion, double especially if they don't. Another good strategy is to ask a teammate, either support or jungler or even top laner, to hover nearby, so that if you ever get jumped, they can quickly move to assist you, and the enemy will get into a fight they weren't prepared for. And last, but certainly not least... Okay, I get it. You tried everything I told you and you still keep dying. Maybe you did have someone hovering for you, but they vanished as soon as you took your eyes away from them for an atto second. Just like my dad disappeared when he went out to buy cigarettes. Maybe the enemy team sent four dudes to pulverize you while your team was dancing mid lane. But that's the thing. Getting yourself in these situations will develop a sense of when you're safe and when the enemy will be sending an ICBM down your lane. Test you what you can and can't get out of, how fed you need to be to pressure a lane 1v2, or how well your mechanics and champion knowledge can get you out of certain death, come from playing, trying, and dying a lot. How do you think the... Bows? The Bows? Bows? The Bows FFs wins games. This guy can die 30 times on Scion and still carry the game just through annihilating the enemy turrets and making sure he knows exactly when to push these turrets, when dying is worth it, and when it's better to just run away. I haven't asked him, but you can be sure he had to die a lot and lose a ton of games to get to this point. The argument I want to make is, don't be afraid to test your limits. Go get those turret platings. Go take that side lane turret. And if you die and get flamed to the seventh circle of hell, well, at least you learn something from it. So uh, moral of the story is, you need to die. Now. In game, of course.